As UAVs get smaller, the likelihood of them being utilized in covert operations grows. This is demonstrated by Teledyne Flare's Black Hornet PRS. In the defense business, nano drones, also known as mini drones, are fast gaining prominence. Teledyne's Flare's Black Hornet places fast situational awareness capabilities in the hands of soldiers. With a length of 6.6 .6 inches and a weight of under 33 ounces, it's easily deployable by a soldier. Because of these proportions, Black Hornet pilots enjoy a significant tactical advantage. Due to a very undetectable visual and audible signature, discrete functioning is possible. The diminutive size of the aircraft has no bearing on its capabilities. The Black Hornet, which has optical and infrared cameras, can set video across a distance of up to 1.24 miles. It can last up to 25 minutes, which is sufficient time to thoroughly investigate a situation. In today's video, we're going to talk about the world's smallest and the most insane military drones ever made. But before we move on, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update from us. A Competitive Advantage Consider the case of a group of troops entrusted with clearing a structure. They're lacking in weaponry and reinforcements. It's likely that you'll come across some hostiles. It's possible that the enemy has a numerical advantage over the team. Entering the room is the only way to find out. A soldier with a Black Hornet PRS intervenes to influence the situation. The pilot can fly it in close without being observed because of its low profile. Because of the remote operation, the soldiers are also kept out of range of hostile fire. The Black Hornet flies nearly silently into the building, transmitting a video feed to the squad leader's iPad. With this information, the leader confirms the number of location of hostiles. Soldiers can now plan an attack strategy based on real-time intelligence and strike unexpectedly. The Black Hornet is a pocket-sized reconnaissance option that's crucial to mission success. More importantly, the intelligence is delivered directly to the warfighter. In larger, more intricate unmanned systems, intelligence is fed through a series of filters, each of which delays communication. The FLIR Black Hornet PRS can assist you. The Personal Reconnaissance System, or PRS, is a small drone that focuses on increasing the capabilities of individual soldiers as its name suggests. As a result, the battlefield performance of the unit improves. Army soldiers will deploy to Afghanistan this summer with the 1.16-ounce Black Hornet mini drone as an air support device. Ground robots will also be deployed next year, initially for the purpose of transporting supplies rather than combat, but field testing has persuaded the Army to assign these ungainly mechanical mules to specialists and only loan them to frontline soldiers as needed. Soldiers, on the other hand, are so thrilled about the mini drones that the Army plans to purchase 9,000 of them over the next three years, each with two drones to deploy the Army's smallest and most vulnerable units, nine man infantry squads. The mini drones and larger robots are all part of a larger revolution in the infantry, which was sparked in part by former Defense Secretary Jim Mattis. Mattis' former service, the Marines, have updated their 5.6mm rifles and added a specialized drone operator to each rifle squad. With new 6.8mm weaponry, high-tech aiming goggles, virtual reality training, and of course robots on the way, the Army is moving even further. Because none of these unmanned devices are truly autonomous, they must be operated remotely by a person, which necessitates the availability of a functioning battlefield network free of enemy jamming. The FLIR Black Hornet doesn't require constant military supervision because it has many automated functions and only performs short missions. Ground robots, on the other hand, require significantly more supervision since they must avoid rocks, bogs, tree stumps, and other obstacles that no unmanned air vehicle has to deal with and that artificial vision software can't identify it. The Army intends to enhance the technology so that one soldier can oversee a mostly autonomous swarm instead of one person remotely directing one robot. On the battlefield, however, even with today's limited autonomy, considerable changes can be done. The Army has already put the Palm Top Black Hornet, also known as the Soldier Born Sensor or SBS, in the hands literally of a brigade of the Elite 82nd Airborne, which is preparing to deploy to Afghanistan. The 1st Security Force Assistance Brigade will be the second unit to receive the mini drone this fall after the 1st Security Force Assistance Brigade, which is already deployed to Afghanistan. For the first time, a squad leader will be able to scout ahead by air before exposing human soldiers on the ground. The SPS is equipped with both night and day sensors and can fly for up to 20 minutes before needing to be recharged. On the other hand, the squad level mini drone is merely the entry model. Drones with more components will be larger and more capable, but they'll also be more expensive and require more maintenance. On a conference call with the reporters last week, 
Sando and other Army officials said that although squads will get the Black Hornet SPS, platoons will get the somewhat larger short-range reconnaissance or SRR drone. After a series of testing this month, September and January, six SRR competitors will be cut down to one that will enter service in April 2020. The winner must be under 3 pounds, able to fly for 30 minutes, and able to perch and stare, landing an advantage point overlooking a target region to keep watch without diminishing its flight time. The current RQ-11 Raven will be used by companies as it's still small enough for soldiers to pick up and toss. Battalions employ the Raven as well, although the Army plans to develop a new long-range reconnaissance drone for them. The LRR, on the other hand, is not yet an official program. The brigades are now flying the RQ-7 Shadow, which requires a catapult to launch and a runway to land. It will be replaced in 2021 by the future Tactical Unmanned Aerial Systems, or FTUAS, a vertically taken off and landing mini helicopter. The Army is putting Advanced Unmanned Aerial Systems, or QAS, to the test to replace the Great Eagle, a derivative of the renowned Predator, which is currently in use by divisions. If you enjoyed the video so far, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more such interesting videos. Drones with a kamikaze attitude Semi-autonomous weapons, according to some observers, will have the same dramatic impact on ground warfare as the machine gun. They can get past typical defenses to target infantry units anywhere on the battlefield for $6,000 each, compared to $150,000 for the Hellfire missile that Predator and Reaper drones launch on a regular basis. This capability could save American troops' lives, but it could also put them and Americans at home at risk from terrorists or nation-states who haven't previously had success to such lethal and affordable technology. Sean Scheich, a missile analyst at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, stated, I believe this is going to be the next IED. We view it as a problem and we have some defenses in place, but not enough. These unmanned aircraft, often known as kamikaze, suicide, or killer drones, do not launch missiles. Instead, they're missiles. Unlike traditional missiles, they may circle over a target, wait for the exact moment to strike, and hit with incredible precision. The U.S. military would not have been able to battle as well as it did in Iraq and Afghanistan if the opposition possessed killer drones. They'll almost probably be present when you face your next wartime adversary. Terrorists will eventually get them as well, a threat that has Homeland Security officials scrambling for a solution due to a lack of a flawless defense. Drones are being used by over 100 countries and non-state groups, and the technology is rapidly evolving, said Paul Scher, a former Army Ranger and author of Army of None, a book about autonomous weapons. It certainly levels the playing field between the United States and terrorists or rebel groups in a way that's clearly not favorable to the United States. Small lethal drones are becoming increasingly difficult to detect on radar, and they can even be programmed to kill targets without human contact using facial recognition or other computer wizardry. Experts warn that while the Pentagon and the Department of Homeland Security are investing billions in anti-drone technology, there is no foolproof version yet. The switchblade may be carried into battle in a backpack and fly up to 7 miles to assault the target, weighing only 512 pounds, including its small warhead. The 300 is designed to kill people, whilst the 600 can demolish armored vehicles. The larger one is yet to be approved for public display by Air Environment. When they launch, their blade-like wings flare out, earning them the nickname Switchblade. It allows our warfighter to have a battlefield superiority that our adversary can't see, hear or foresee, and truly precisely deliver a certain mission result, said Wahid Nawabi, Air Environment CEO who was born in Afghanistan. The Taliban and those who have been afflicted by it, according to Nawabi, refer to it as an angry bird or a buzzing bee. According to official procurement data, the Switchblade 300 is a fraction of the cost of a Hellfire missile, let alone the whole cost of keeping Nevada-based Reaper drones in the sky. The Switchblade has a feature that allows the user to regulate the explosion radius, allowing it to kill the driver of a car but not the passengers. According to Air Environment, the weapon can be waved off up to two seconds before impact in the event of a mistake or risk to civilians. Are the hefty maintenance expenses of these drones worth it? Please let us know in the comment section below. That concludes this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell symbol to never miss any update from us.